verse 17, the gospel of Matthew. Look at that. Flesh and blood could not 
reveal that unto you. But it was what? It was his father from heaven. The spirit of the Lord had to reveal who you are. So he says, listen how Jesus answered it. Jesus said what? Blessed. Blessed are thou, Simon, or John. And we see that word, blessed. And I used to identify with that. You know, it's amazing when you do a little study. <laughs> you can get some things that you say, hmm. So two times three equals this, plus this to the degree equals that. Or if you do a little study, you can get those things. Um, blessed has some different meanings. One of the meanings is most we equate it to as being happy. It's being happy. But when it translates, um, happy is translated into English. It's English. We know that the Greek and Hebrew words had um, lots of different meanings, and they meant a whole lot more. Um, we use love now like it's nothing. But, and we know that there's different meanings for, for love. But blessed had some meaning. And one of the meanings is it's not about happy. Because happy comes from the English word. They say that it's called hap, which means to be what? Lucky. And you have favorable circumstances. So when I'm happy, I have what? There's something going in my favor, right? Um, but this blessed that we speak to has a meaning. Um, so now I look at blessed not as happy, but as divine joy. That divine happiness that comes from, um, that only comes from God. And also, blessed here means to be fully satisfied. Regardless of my condition, I am fully satisfied because I have been indwelled by the, the Spirit of God. And that's where Peter got that from. He was what? Indwelt by the Spirit of God that he could give an account of who God was to him in his life. And what did he say? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And nothing in us of ourselves could reveal that to us. But it has to be the Spirit of God. Just as we come unto Jesus. was really set the predicate for how we come unto Jesus. We can't come to the Father, but by what? By Him. We can't get to God, but by Him. Because you remember they asked the question. Uh, we want to see God. We want to know God and stuff. He said, if you, the disciples asked that, he said, if you know me, you know my Father. If you see me, you see my Father. So, uh, there's no other way that we can come to Christ. Um, to come to, to him. But to him. we must go to him. And then it says, upon, he said, Peter, upon this, this rock, I will build my church. And what is the rock? Jesus. Yeah, you see. Yeah, you got a hundred so far, sister. <laughs> you got a hundred. You got a thousand. Hey, listen, the rock. And, and, and with that symbolized, when you talk about a rock, you talk about a, a foundation, something that's solid, that can't be shaken and moved. He said, upon the profession of your faith, upon your belief that, that I am the Son of God, I will build my church. And what is the church? The church, the ecclesia, the, the, the called out assembly, is nothing but true believers in the Son of God. Not, you notice I said true. Not fake or coming there and have my mind no true believers in the Son of God. So he said, upon this rock, upon Jesus, upon the profession of your faith and the belief in Christ Jesus, I will build my church and something else. When we talk about that rock, sister, uh, you just said that it's a it's a solid, it's a foundation. Everybody know about foundation. If the foundation is not laid right, what happens to the, the structure? It shifts, it cracks, it breaks. It comes apart, a little wind. And <coughs> but when the foundation is solid, the wind may blow, 
the, the, the dogs may howl, the lightning may, may roar, and all of that thing, but the foundation is firm and sure. And that's what Jesus was saying. Upon this rock, upon me, upon your believing in me as true believers, I will build my church of true believers. And guess what? He was laying the predicate for what was coming against them. Some things was going to break loose. He knew that when he died, that his disciples, not only his disciples, those that followed, were going to be what? Persecuted for believing in him. Um, some were going to die. Lot were going to die and be crucified. So he, he, he was preparing. And so what did he say? Upon this rock will I build my church, and the what? The gates of hell shall not prepare, prevail against it. He knew that every demonic and every evil spirit, every evil being and everything will come against him. But he said, my church will not fail. It will prevail in the end. Uh, what what, what a, um, a wonderful um, consolation and thought to, to know that the Christ that we serve is solid. It's not something, you, you, you ever been around people who were, who were kind of wishy-washy, who, who were vacillating in what they believe? Yeah, I think I believe this, somebody else said, no, but I go over here, no, I do this, and no, I change my mind, and no, I don't want to go. That's not the word of God. That's not the church of God. It's solid. And guess what? Do we see the gates of hell coming against the church now? Yes. All manner of things are happening in the church. When someone can walk in a church and murder nine people having Bible study like we have it now. When some people can walk in, when people can bomb and burn churches, when there's all kind of mess and, and, and division and derision that's in the church, but God's word is true, and it will prevail through all of that. Everything in this world will pass away, but that which comes out of what? The church. And what is that? His word and his people. Everything else is going to pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but thy word will do what? Will be forever. It's a solid foundation. It cannot be it cannot be uh, uh, shaken. It cannot be uprooted. It cannot be overturned or overrun because it's solid. But he didn't mean, but he, he knew that they were going to make attempts at his church. And they did it to him. And he was, he, he, he was God. He was fully God and fully man. And they came after him. But his church and his word, he said, would last forever. And what do you think some things that was going to come after? They were going to be beaten, persecuted. I mean, beaten, um, dispersed, isolated because of what? Their beliefs. Their beliefs in Christ Jesus. And if there's any doubt that I am to be in question about my belief in God, then you need to look at your, your walk with Christ. There should be no doubt. If the Lord came back in the next five seconds, you have to know that you know that you know that you know that guess what? I'm going back to Jesus. Not just yet. Not just because. I see y'all later. Not just because uh, my mama served him. Yeah. Or my daddy served him. Oh, I feel good when I come to church. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with my belief. Do I confess? With the mouth, confession is made. With the mouth. So, he said, the gates of hell, Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against him. And the floodgates were open. You know, the, the uh, 120 I saw was in the upper room when, when Jesus was crucified and they were in the upper room. Do you think they were having a party? No. What were they? They were scared. They were scared that them wrong 
Roman soldiers, not only the Roman soldiers, what is much in Roman? Them, 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 them Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, that, that, that council, the Jewish people, the old people, they were the ones. We're not going to have y'all just um, stirring things up here about this Jesus. He had been crucified. But you know, the week before he was crucified, they were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, and blessed be to the name of the Lord. Sister uh, um, Felicia, that's what she was. They, they, they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, and then the next word they say, what? Crucify him. Crucif cru just crucify him. Yeah. And here we come. Here the floodgates come up against the church. The gates of hell was unleashed when Jesus left. But he told them something before he left. That's why I like this lesson so much. He told them something before he left. Who did he tell you? You know, when you were praying, he said, I'm going to, he said he was going to do what? I'm going to prepare a place for you. There, where I am, there you might be also. But he told him something else in that same, those same words, that what? Because we hear this all the time. Jesus said he was getting his disciples ready. Anything that he takes us to and, um, or in, he's going to equip us for it. He brought Moses and he told him, he put him on the backside of the desert for 40 years. He brought him out there and he said, you're going to go tell Pharaoh to let them people go. That's like me going up to the White House and saying, you know what? Um, yeah, little here, President, I want reparations for all for all blacks and everything. Like, they, they give them their 40 years. That's like going up there and saying that. They arrest me and take me out. He had to go before Pharaoh. Moses had to go before Pharaoh, this mighty man with this nation and had all these four plus million of Jews enslaved and I got to go tell him to let him go. And what am I going with? I'm going with Aaron, who probably was scary also, and a stick, a staff. And guess what? I don't talk that well. I kind of stutter when I talk. But anytime he takes his into something, he's going to equip us. He was equipping his disciples that the gates of hell were going to come against you, but they wasn't going to prevail as long as they were in Christ Jesus. So they were in the upper room, not having a party. They were scared, watching, praying, what's going to happen. But he told them that he was not going to leave them what? I'm not going to leave you. When he left him, he was not going to leave him what? Alone. I was going to not leave you comfortless. I am going to leave a comforter. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come. Here's that indwellness. Before the Holy Spirit could only come upon people, it didn't dwell in it. It would come and go. It just only came up. Now the Holy Spirit was coming to what? Coming within to stay, to take a hold in you, to take root in you, that what? That the gates of hell couldn't prevail against the people of God, the true believers of God. What a wonderful thing. Um, scary? Yes. But here these unlearned, as they call them, ignorant men that he took, and they were up in the upper room with 120 so men and women, and the Holy Spirit came in like what? rushing mighty wind and filled the whole house and it shook and the cloven tongues of fire was on their, on their shoulders and they went out. They went out here, these scary, unlearned men who were scared and terrified got the Holy Spirit indwelt in them and they went out on the streets on the day of Pentecost and did what? Preach the word of God. The word of God. That the gates of what? Hell shall not prevail. Amen. Bold men. And they said upon the first day, what? 3,000 souls were added unto the church. And the next day, 5,000 souls were added unto the church. And they just added daily unto the church. So the gates of hell were not prevailing against them. And here's some authority and power that he gave them. Did Jesus not tell them 
that um, in him we had all authority over the enemy and Satan? Did he not say that to them? Yes. Here he's reminding them, them of that. In verse 19, um, you guys have the red letter Bible? Is it in red? Yeah, it's in red. <laughs> so Jesus is speaking. He said, and I will give unto thee, what? The keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now what does that mean? What does that mean? Jesus is saying, those things that I already have authority over, I am giving them to you. So if you pound them here, they pound and they already pound it with me in glory. I'm giving you the, the keys of heaven. I'm giving you the authority to speak to demons, cast them out, um, put Satan on the run, and stand firm in your word. Stand firm in the word. Those things that you So when we give authority to the enemy to, to cause what? Doubt, fear, um, um, and our vacillating, our going back and forth, we're just giving authority to him. The Lord said, you want to lose that? I'll lose it. Let it go. Do we see that here in our world today? Yeah. Things are all loose. Um, that the church could just stand up and speak against. Now the pastor speaks strongly on this and we're to speak strongly as the church on it also. You don't pass the pastor speak strongly on it. Not only him, but a lot of ministers throughout. He speaks very strongly on it. These are things of the gates of hell coming up against the church. Speak strongly against um, against um, the sacred vows of marriage between a woman and a man, and how the church has been silent on a lot of those things and have allowed this. Union that says, "What God put together, let no man put asunder," and, and how we have allowed um, people to speak out, and there's all types of things that's happening in the church. There's homosexuality, marriage. There's men and men, women and women, and there's just no other way around. Now, the, the thing about it is, we don't hate people who seek things that way. We have to love them. The, the Bible tells us we have to. We are to love them. Um, just like Christ loves us. What? Love the sinner, but what? Amen. Hate the sin. And, and we have to call that what it is. And it doesn't mean you go out with a Bible looking for them. <laughs> you know, like you see it. They used to say, Mama said, you can't, you can't beat the Bible into nobody, you know, when we was younger. And we just said, you know, our parents wanted to. <laughs> Sister Curry, they just wanted to beat the Bible. But we they understood that they could not be the Bible. And we're not to, to confront um, individuals like that. But we are to speak of, of what we believe in the Bible. It's just like Jesus asking, come on, y'all, we get it. It's just like Jesus asking, whom do men say that I am? He's just like, it's, it's them asking us that. What do you say about homosexuality and marriage? You got to know that you know that you know that you know that it is an abomination before God. Men with men, women with women, working the things that are unseemly before God, and he turned them over to a reprobate mind, which is a poison mind. He turned them over to the poison and gave them that they burn and that lust for one another. And how did it come to that? If you read the word, we will know when we read it, we know. How did it come to that? He says that they professing themselves to be what? Wiser than God. Anywhere in the Bible where you see somebody professing themselves to be wiser than God, just keep reading a few more things down. He's going to turn them into fools. <laughs> They're going to turn into fools professing themselves to be wiser than God. He gave them over to their own, to their own lust and they burned them. That's New Testament. That's wrong. You could go all the way back to Leviticus when it talks about that men were not to lay with men and women were not to live with women. That's all the way back then. So those are the gates of hell coming up against the church. And we are to stand 
like Peter said, and said that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And we are to, to, we are to, to proclaim his word in season and out of season. The gates, that the gates of hell are not prevailing. Now guess what? Whether we do it or not, someone will. <laughs> if it has to be what? <laughs> if it has to be those rocks of Brother John Cain to stand up and say, hey, look, that's sin. If we don't do it, the Lord will, will execute it, that someone will, that the gates of hell won't prevail. So the Lord has given us the authority to bind those things. He has given us the authority to bind those things. Not those people. That doesn't mean people. That's not for us. That's God's only. It means those things. We're to bind those things upon us. Not the people. That's God's. That's God's doing. And guess what? He can change and turn their heart around. He can change and turn their heart around. Uh, it was it was just like um, my vehicle got uh, burglarized the other day. It was so quick. They did it so quick, and how they did it, it was. And they took my my um, business checkbook that sat on the floor, and I had a gift, a baby shower gift in a bag, beautiful bag. It was bright and shiny. It was on the back. It was on the floor, and they, they took that and a checkbook. They didn't look in the so they know they was in a hurry. They didn't look in the console. They would have got a lot of stuff until they just lived in the console. But they, they, they grabbed that. I know I have a point with this. I don't know where I'm going with it, but I, I forget it. And I do that all the time. I remember I have those points and I lose my train of thought. But anyway, they got that. Oh, yeah, here's where I'm going. They got it. And, and my wife said, this is about how God could change your heart. I said, well, nothing good is going to come to me. I, I just believe that. I'm not going to. And listen, I could have been worried. And I just said, I'm just not going to worry about it. And my wife said, you know what? They just don't know who, who's being who they broke in. She said, not talking about me, but about that spirit that is in dwelt in me. They just don't know who's being they broke in. And she said, if they get saved by taking that check, God bless them. That's the thing. God can, God can save them out of that. So we have that authority and that power to speak to those things, to bind those things in Jesus' name, that he has already bonded here in his word. We're not calling it something that we out of the new, I don't know. It's all in his word. He has bonded all those things that will come up. He's already there. And guess what? He gave us the authority to do it also. And we have to stand up with that same authority to speak against those things that are not of him. Because the only thing that will be, that will last in the last day is his word, which comes where? Out of the church. The people of God comes from out of the church. So we have authority to, to, to um, speak against those things that will come against the church and to be firm in our stance. You ever saw someone go up to fight and, and, and they go like, it's a group of people. Now if one, I got all y'all coming at me. <laughs> and y'all are coming, I'm like, oh, all these people coming at me. And they said, Who, where am I going to go? Guess where I'm going to first? Who do you think I'm going to attack first? Now, i got to be prayed up this. Who do you think I'm going to attack first? Not so much the first. It's that one that looks weak, that looks a little. <laughs> that, 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 one, that, that one that's not firm. The rest of them will say, you know what, we're going. But that one that's, okay, we're going to go. I'm, I'm going to go right for that one. And I'm going to pump his head. And I'm going to pump his head. But um, that's the one. Oh, you know, there are times when the one who's talking the loudest. They say the one who's throwing who's all them wolf cookies. You know, you got to lead him in the mouth. And guess what the other one's going to do? They're going to take off. That's just what uh, David did to Goliath, right? So we got to be firm on our word. The, the point that I'm trying to make is that 
when we stand firm on God's word, we, we have to be firm because we are on what? Solid foundation. We are stepping out on his word, the rock, which is Christ Jesus. And there is no variance in his word. There's no lying, no wishy-washy, no oscillating, no going back and forth. It's just the word of God. And that's all we have to stand on, is the word of God. And he is what the disciples say. So as I close, we are in the days that kind of brings us back to where the disciples were. We have to be indwelt by the Spirit of God. We have to allow the Spirit of God to work in us. As true believers, the body is, uh, the church is a body of true believers. Called out, the called out assembly. Use what? Exclusively for God's use. That's us as the church as we move. And how we are to stand against those things that will come against us. And know that God is with us. And that the gates of hell, not even Satan himself, can rock the foundation that God has built in the church. Because it's on what? He built it on him. And guess what? He can't lie. He can't lie. He put Satan and all of his imps on the run. But when we go in ourselves, and when we go in our own strength, and our own little peak brain knowledge that we have, we think we're wise, and we go in our own little peak brain knowledge, and we go in all our fluffiness and haughtiness and, and sticking out our chest and all of our degrees and our education and all of that foolishness, when we go in that, that's when we are made to look like fools. But guess what? The church of God will always be. The church of God will always be. So we are to go in that day. Whom do men say that I am? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And upon this profession, Christ said he will build his church, us. We're the church. He will build his church. And no matter what comes against it, the gates of hell could open up. And it will not prevail against the church. And he's given us what? Authority to bind and to loosen things that he has already get, that he has already done. He's already had victory over. Because we know that when we die, even death. Even death, because I know that when I die, guess what? <laughs> But yeah, my, my soul just takes flight to be with Jesus. Say, you could never have me. You could throw things against me and all that, but you could never have me because even in death, he, he's already overcome death. Death and the grave couldn't hold him. So even in that, we'll be with him in glory. Amen. 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 And amen. It's the lesson. That's it. God bless you. God bless those who are visiting by internet. We thank God for you. Uh, and we're going to close with our prayer circle. And just be mindful that it's 7.55, so I did my piece. If we get out here at 8, 